All right, tech family, the Legion Slim 7 for 2022 shocked me as to how good it is. So much so, I'm getting one for myself. Heck, I started this channel with the goal of finding the best powerful portable laptop because back then I was doing three of the most demanding tasks you could possibly do on a laptop. Video editing, software development, and gaming. Each of them having very different needs. A high resolution, color accurate display for video editing, powerful graphics for gaming, and a high performance CPU with lots of RAM for coding. Anyway, I couldn't find the perfect laptop, so I started this channel to share my search with you. Well, the Slim 7 is as close to perfect as I've seen, and today I've got a blockbuster video for you. Not only am I going to review the Slim 7, but I'm going to compare both the 7i model with Intel and the 7 model with AMD, as I've got both models in. But there's more. I've also got both display options, so we'll compare them too. If at the end of this video you liked what you watched, make sure to click the like button and get subscribed. It shows your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these and, as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. My Slim 7i with Intel has the 12700H processor, 16GB of RAM and an NVIDIA RTX 3060 graphics. It also has the 1920x1200 resolution panel. My Slim 7 with AMD has the Ryzen 9 6900HX processor, also 16GB of RAM and a Radeon RX 6800S graphics. It has a high resolution 2560x1600 panel. Let's start this comparison by taking a look at raw CPU performance. I tested both the default balance profile as well as the performance one. You can configure this in Lenovo's Vantage software. Both laptops were fully updated, latest BIOS, drivers and Windows version. Let's start with Geekbench, which tests a variety of common short-running tasks. The Intel model with the 12700H completely smashes the AMD model with the Ryzen 6900HX processor. Not even close. In fact, the Intel variant is almost the fastest laptop I've ever tested in this benchmark. Neck and neck with the Apple MacBook Pro 16 with the maxed out M1 Max CPU. Switching to Cinebench, which tests performance under full load. It's again a fantastic result for the Intel model, destroying every other processor I've ever tested. I'm really floored by how well this laptop performs and how much faster it is than the Ryzen variant. And by the way, I did check the internals of both laptops to see if there was a difference in the cooling solution. There wasn't. Taking a look at how the processor performs under sustained max load, I ran a torture test of Cinebench on a loop for 10 minutes. Performance drops during this time were negligible, with the exception of the Intel model when run in balance mode. This indicates that for the most part, the cooling solution in this laptop is up to the task. But my hypothesis is to maintain the laptop's quieter operation when on balance mode, the Intel processor must be fed less power. Let's double click in. Here are the power draws during the 10 minute torture test. You can see that there are some drops from the initial burst, but honestly, averaging 60 watts for Intel on balance mode and almost 80 on performance is very good. On the AMD side, power draw is less on balance mode, but similar on performance mode. I want to call out how much better Intel performs per watt when on performance mode when higher wattage is fed to these processors. Here are the temperatures the processors reached during the torture test. The biggest delta is that the AMD processor runs a good amount cooler on balance mode. Now, here are the speeds the processor ran at during the torture test. The large drops on the Intel processor are telling and match what I said earlier. The Intel processor runs hot, and the speed it runs at likely needs to be lowered to keep the processor operating within the desired temperature. Even though the Legion Slim with Intel performs phenomenally well, if the 12700H processor didn't run as hot, you could probably extract even more performance out of it. I'm tempted to repaste it with liquid metal and see what scores I get. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see that. Let's take a look at temperatures you'd feel when the laptop is under full load. On the whole, the AMD model feels cooler by a good couple of degrees. I do want to say this, both laptops remain very comfortable to the touch on the keyboard deck when under load. Anything under 40 degrees Celsius is pretty good. When looking at fan noise when under full load, both are almost identical. These laptops are loud, but honestly, quieter than other gaming laptops that I've tested which have worse performance, like the Asus G14. Switching to everyday use, like browsing the web and working on Office documents, both of these laptops were, for the most part, very quiet. There were occasions where the fan would suddenly kick in, likely due to an application running something in the background, but these were few and far between. Overall, these are some of the quietest gaming laptops I've ever tested. Now, 
On to graphics performance. To test graphics, I tested two different performance profiles. First is a test of what I would consider the default mode. This mode keeps fan noise reasonable and provides decent battery life. For this, I set the performance profile to balanced and turned on hybrid graphics, i.e. the processor's integrated graphics were being used. The second test is on the highest performance mode. Using the MUX switch, I turned off the integrated graphics and ran only the dedicated. Unfortunately, my units do not have the same dedicated graphics, so we can't isolate the performance differences attributed to the differences in the processors. My AMD model, which I purchased from Best Buy, came with a Radeon RX 6800S graphics. My Intel model came with the RTX 3060. Lenovo feeds this RTX 3060 with 100 watts of power. This is close to the max for that GPU. If you customize this laptop on Lenovo's site, you can configure it with an even beefier RTX 3070. This is also capped at 100 watts though. Looking at the older Firestrike DirectX 11 benchmark results, my AMD unit is much faster. The Radeon 6800S graphics is a lot faster than the NVIDIA RTX 3060. The overall score of the Intel model does get a little boost from the faster CPU performance though. Switching to the newer TimeSpy DirectX 12 benchmark, it's the same story, although not as pronounced. Seeing these results, I am tempted to order a config from Lenovo's site with the Intel CPU and a 100W RTX 3070 to see if it can beat the Radeon 6800S with the same wattage, and how much faster it is than the same wattage RTX 3060. Rounding out the gaming benchmarks, the Port Royal ray tracing benchmark showed a big win for Nvidia when on performance mode. I don't think many people will turn on ray tracing on these laptops though, the graphics power of these it isn't really enough for that. Certainly not if you plan to take advantage of the fast refresh rate panels in them. As a matter of personal interest, since we edit our videos using Premiere Pro, I ran the Puget benchmark. Results continue to be a huge win for Intel. Let's talk about battery performance and battery life. Performance when on battery saw a massive drop, particularly for the Intel variant. That being said, a score of 8000 is still plenty fast for tasks like browsing the web and some software development. It's around the same speed as the HP Spectre 13.5 for 2022 gets when plugged in. And that of course has Intel's power sipping U-chip though. To test battery life, I put both laptops in best battery life settings, set both screens to 200 nits of brightness and ran a Netflix video on repeat for 4 hours. I actually ran the test several times. The first time I forgot to set the screens to a slower 60Hz refresh rate. If anyone is wondering if doing this makes your battery last longer, it makes a massive difference. Battery life was far worse when these screens were running at their native 165Hz. Hopefully, in future, laptops can offer variable refresh rates down to 1Hz for even better battery life. Mobile phones are already starting to do this. Anyway, when I went to fix this, what I noticed was that my Intel model, which has the 1920 x 1200 panel, only offered a lower 48Hz refresh rate, whereas the AMD model with a higher resolution panel offered the standard 60Hz. This likely offers a slight benefit to Intel. After 4 hours, my AMD model had 50% remaining and the Intel model 36. But then I found that the Intel model has an additional setting in Lenovo's Vantage software. You can force it to use only the lower powered integrated graphics. On this mode, it had 41% remaining. If we extrapolate this out, the AMD unit should last around 8 hours and the Intel model a little less than 7. This is definitely a win for AMD, but honestly it's a good result for both these laptops. Gaming laptops tend to have poor battery life, and these results are both above what I've seen in other gaming laptops. By the way, little note, when I looked at the internals of both, I saw an empty area to the left of the battery. I think Lenovo could have put a larger battery here than the 71 watt hour one that both these laptops come with. Talking about the internals, unfortunately, these laptops max out at 24 gig of RAM as 8 gig is soldered. I have heard rumors that there is an Intel model available outside the US that has 32, but I can't seem to find it. Anyway, important note, these laptops use DDR5 RAM. Unlike DDR3 and 4, each stick of DDR5 RAM runs in dual channel. So if you have two sticks, one soldered plus the replaceable one, where there is the same amount of RAM, you'll get quad channel. For the remainder, dual. Let me give you an example. If you max it out at 24 gig, first 16 will run in quad channel, and remaining eight will run in dual. It's annoying, and I'd prefer to have the option of more RAM in such a powerful laptop. But for many people, this shouldn't be a deal breaker. 
All right, let's switch gears and look at the displays. As mentioned, I have both the 1920 by 1200 panel and the 2560 by 1600 one. I'd strongly recommend you get the 2560 by 1600 panel if you can afford it. It's significantly brighter by around 150 nits. Also, when you spread 1920 by 1200 pixels over a large 16 inch display, it isn't very pixel dense. Text can look pixelated. You probably won't notice it when gaming, but for something like typing up a bunch of text, you'll appreciate a crisper display. And to be honest, even 2560 by 1600 isn't that high on a 16 inch panel. It's only 188 pixels per inch, substantially less than on a MacBook Pro's 254. Combining all this together, on the 1920 by 1200 panel, I was only able to see 34 rows of Excel without feeling like I needed to squint. On the 2560 by 1600 display, I was able to see 40. This was at 125% window scaling for the 1920 model and 150% for the 2560. One warning on these displays, although they are color accurate enough for viewing content on screen, they are not color accurate enough for professional color work. You want to add an external monitor with higher Adobe RGB and P3. Let's talk keyboard. This laptop has the best typing experience of any I've used to date. I said that recently about the Spectre 13.5, but this laptop raises the bar. Key travel is good with a satisfying click. The keyboard deck is very sturdy and as mentioned when I talked about temperatures you'd feel while using the laptop, the keyboard deck remains comfortably cool to the touch. And if you like number pads, this one has one. Next, although the trackpad was accurate and quite good to use, several times the palm rejection just didn't work properly. I would be typing away and all of a sudden it was like I clicked somewhere random on the trackpad. It was a bit frustrating. If you're using this laptop on a desk, I'd recommend you disable the trackpad and use a mouse. I imagine most people who use this laptop will just do that anyway. The port situation is plentiful. On the AMD model, you've got two USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, an HDMI 2.1 port, and a full-sized SD card reader. The USB ports are the fast 20 gigabit 3.2 Gen 2 ones, which is great. The Intel model though takes the win with an extra third USB-A port on the back and one of the USB-C ports is Thunderbolt supporting 40 gigabit transfer speeds. The only downside is that the SD card reader in both is the slower UHS-1 one. Both laptops can be charged via USB-C which is great as you won't have to bring the large 230 watt power brick with you on days that you don't need the laptop's full performance. You can just bring a smaller one with you. I forgot to talk about the look and feel of the chassis. It looks and feels somewhat premium. It is definitely not at the level of a Razer Blade or a MacBook Pro. In fact, the bottom of the chassis of my Slim 7 AMD model feels extremely sharp. It's like the chassis panels don't fit properly together. This was the same with the Slim 7i model I saw on display at Best Buy. My Slim 7i model that I purchased though didn't have this issue. I really want to see Lenovo address this as it doesn't happen on any other Legion laptop I've ever owned and it didn't happen on my Slim 7 from last year. Please be careful handling this laptop from the bottom as it could be sharp. Here's how the webcam of the Legion Slim 7 looks and sounds with excellent lighting. Fingerprint reader works well and will get you logged in fast. Sound is good enough, the speakers get loud and there is a sound stage. That being said, the sound doesn't sound full, it sounds a bit tinny and definitely lacks bass. Pricing I feel is very fair at around 1,200 to 1,900 US dollars depending on the config. I say around as Lenovo prices tend to frequently go on sale. Please pay special attention to the AMD Advantage model available at Best Buy, which has the better 2560 display and the Radeon RX 6800S graphics, which as I demonstrated is extremely fast for gaming. When that model goes on sale, it is a solid buy recommendation from me. I'll place a link to that model down below so you know which one I'm referring to. Well, let's wrap. Overall, this is an awesome laptop and a substantial step up from prior models. When it comes to which model to get, the Intel model, as you've seen, performs insanely well and better than the AMD. That is from a pure CPU perspective though. When it comes to graphics, the Radeon RX 6800S beat the NVIDIA RTX 3060. As mentioned, I'm super interested to see how the 100W 3070 performs. If it gets close to the RX 6800S, getting that with an Intel CPU and the higher resolution display would be the ultimate performance config. But if you do want the longest battery life and absolutely must have the coolest operating temperatures, stick to that all AMD version, which as I said, I'll link down below. 
Compared to the Asus G14, G15 or M16, those laptops feel very warm to the touch while you're using them and you'll hear more fan noise in light tasks. Compared to Razer's Blades, those laptops have uncomfortable keyboards, shorter battery life and feel significantly warmer while gaming. If you want a high powered, portable laptop that you can game on, this is it. Heck, even programmers looking for a high performance, portable machine should probably give this one a look. I would prefer to see you on a sharper, higher resolution display though, but if you get the 2560 panel, it should be enough. The only gotcha is whether 24 gig of RAM is enough for you. For most, it should be. The only area where I feel Lenovo fell short is for creators. All they need to do is fix three things and it would expand this laptop's appeal. A more color accurate display, at least 32 gig of RAM if not 64, and a faster SD card reader. Well, that's all for today folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and get subscribed. It shows your appreciation for the crazy amount of work that goes into making these. Oh, and if you do buy this laptop, make sure to use the affiliate links down below. It definitely helps support the channel. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.